Make a snack. Installing Mosquito MQTT Broker on a Raspberry Pi. Now our app and our bot are going to communicate together using something called MQTT. MQTT is a communication mechanism developed by IBM. It stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It's simply a lightweight, meaning a low overhead way to send and receive messages. So because it's lightweight, it takes up very little space on devices and it takes up very little bandwidth when messages are sent back and forth. It's especially useful for the Internet of Things. Now there are three important pieces for MQTT to work. There's a broker, there is one or more publisher and there's one or more subscribers. So the idea behind this is a subscriber tells the broker, hey, if any particular messages come in on this topic, send them my way. The publisher can publish messages and if they're on a topic that's been subscribed to, the broker's gonna say, hey, I got a new message and I'm gonna send it to any of the entities that have subscribed to that. So to think about this, let's imagine you've got a temperature sensor and you've got a heater. Well, the heater might subscribe and say, hey, let me know when the temperature has changed. So our temperature sensor publisher is gonna publish any temperature changes. The broker looks at all incoming messages, it checks the list of subscribers, and it sends the message on to anybody that subscribed to it. So the heater is gonna receive any temperature updates, and the heater can run code that says, hey, if the temperature falls below a particular value, turn the heater on. So think about this in terms of the Internet of Things. You might have sensors for things like, is a door open or has the sun gone down? And you might have a bunch of different subscribers, including an alarm, maybe a display that shows the weather and temperature, and maybe a lamp. You could have multiple subscribers. The heater might subscribe to temperatures and your weather station might subscribe to temperatures as well. So when that change of temperature happens, it's sent into the broker. The broker can say, hey, who gets the temperatures? Oh yeah, the heater does and the heater might turn on. And oh yeah, the weather station gets it so that it can update its display. The alarm might say, hey, let me know if the door opens. If that door does open, the broker will send the message to the alarm and the alarm might sound. And your light might say, hey, let me know if the sun goes down. The light sensor publishes the message. The broker picks it up, sends it onto the light, and depending on how the light was programmed, it might turn on or off. So now what does all this mean for our robot project? Well, we need a broker, so we're gonna download an open source broker program called Mosquito. We also need a subscriber, and what we're going to do is write a Python program, and we'll call that control-pybot.py. Now both of those things are gonna run on our Raspberry Pi. On our iOS device, this is where our app is going to run, and that's gonna act as the publisher, so we'll call that PyBot. Now our subscriber is gonna tell the broker, hey, I wanna to subscribe to all of the messages on the topic, PyBot move. So those messages might include forward, backward, left, and right. And when it receives any of these messages, it's also going to send messages that control the motors on our robot. So for example, if we press the upward button on our PyBot app, that's gonna send a forward message to the broker. The broker will send the message on to the control PyBot. That's the subscriber Python program we're gonna write. The control PyBot is gonna throttle both motors forward. Similarly, the backward message is sent when the user presses the down arrow on the app. The broker picks up the backward message, sends it on to ControlBot, and ControlBot throttles both motors back with a negative value. Press the left arrow button in the app, and the app will publish a left message. The broker sends that over, the PyBot picks up the left message, it throttles the left motor a negative value and the right motor a positive value. And right does just the opposite. It's picked up by the broker, sent onto the control bot, the control bot throttles right negative, left positive, the bot turns to the right. Now let's download and set up Mosquito and we'll also write the control bot program. We'll handle the iOS application in another video. So let's command space to get into Spotlight, type in terminal and press enter. And in terminal, let's SSH into our PyBot. So mine is gonna be py at pybot.local. Type in the password. And the very first command that we're gonna type in here, we're just gonna make sure that we've uh, updated any software that we've got. So we're gonna go ahead and do a sudo apt-get space update, and then press enter here. And again, it's good practice to run this before you install anything new on your Pi. Now what this command does is it takes a look to see if there are any new packages that should be updated, and it updates the list of any needed updates on our Pi. And I'll accelerate the videos for my installs. So now that we have that list that's updated, when we say sudo space apt-get space upgrade, we're saying, hey, go take a look at the list of the updates that we just found out about and make any upgrades that you need to. So press enter to install those upgrades. I'm gonna accelerate the installation video here, and I'll say yes anytime it wants to confirm that it can save things to my SD card. Now I'm also gonna type in sudo space apt-get space dist-upgrade and press enter. Most of the time when you install packages, you don't need this. In fact, what this can do is actually identify if there are conflicts and it will uninstall some software on its own. So if you're running some production systems, you'd wanna be careful because it might uninstall some things that you're not expecting. Right now, I just wanted to go ahead though and clean through anything that might be conflicting because I really want this MQTT server to work. In short, only use this command if your installation instructions recommend it. 
And now here's where the real meat of the installation of Mosquito comes in. You're going to do sudo space apt dash get space install space. Now be sure to pay attention here. Mosquito is actually spelled incorrectly. So it's spelled with two T's and that's because it's named after the MQTT protocol. So it's spelled M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-T-O and then type space and then M-O-S-Q-U-I-T-T-O dash clients and then press enter. You'll eventually be asked if you should use additional disk space. Just do a capital Y and press enter there too. And I've accelerated the install. It actually takes a bit of time and it might even seem like it's stalling here, but hopefully it'll eventually get there for you. Now, if you've been following along this tutorial, you already have Python 3 pip installed, but just in case you could do sudo space apt dash get space install space Python 3 dash pip and press enter. And you can see that mine's already got this installed. Those are the messages that I get, but again, no harm done. And this next command is going to install Python support for MQTT. So that's sudo space pip3 space install space paho, that's P-A-H-O dash M-Q-T-T, and then press enter. And then after this install is done, you'll type in one more command, and this will verify that we have Mosquito up and running and that it's active. So that's S-Y-S-T-E-M-C-T-L, so system control space is dash active is active space and then mosquito with that special spelling m o s q u i t t o and when you press enter you should get a message that says active if everything worked fine if for some reason it didn't you can try to reboot your pi but everything should be good at this point and we're going to enter one more command here and this is the command that's going to ensure that our mosquito client runs every time we reboot the pi which is pretty much what you're going to want to do if you're going to want to put the robot on the floor and then just turn it on so that's sudo space s-y-s-t-e-m-c-t-l again system control space enable space mosquito with the weird spelling m-o-s-q-u-i-t-t-o dot service Press enter, and so now you should find if you turn your Pi off and turn it back on again and log back in, Mosquito should be up and running. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a sudo halt, and press enter, and it's closed out, and I'm gonna turn my Pi off and turn it back on. And again, I didn't need to uh, close out of my terminal, but I did anyway. So I'm gonna open up my terminal again and SSH into my PyBot. And I'm going to type in this S, uh, system CTL space is dash active space mosquito with the mosquito spelling with two T's and press enter here. And I see that it's active. So that test shows that mosquito is going to boot automatically whenever we start our Pi. Now we're going to write that control PyBot Python program. And that's going to act as a subscriber. It's going to subscribe to any incoming messages. The broker is going to send those on as they come in from the publisher or the app. So in order to do that, why don't you open up your browser again to the GitHub repo that contains files related to this project. And again, that address is github.com slash Gallagher, but my spelling of Gallagher is unusual. It looks like gal laugh -er, slash pybot. And if you scroll down here, you'll see the file that we want. That's control-pybot.py. So click on that. Let's take a look at the code. So up top, I've got some things commented out. The first thing is control-pybot.py. So this is just the name of the file that we're going to use when we paste it into nano. Um, also down here, I've got uh, two commands, mosquito underscore pub commands. They're commented out so that you can copy them and paste them into the terminal one by one to eventually test this program at the end of the video. And they're going to act as the publishing client, and that's behaving like the iOS app. It's just going to allow us to test out to make sure the mosquito broker is receiving published messages, and it's forwarding on to this program that we're looking at here, this control-pybot program, and that'll move the robot forward and stop it. Now, it's important that we have the stop command ready to go after we do forward because once we throttle forward it's going to keep going forward until it receives another command. Now in our first uncommented statement here this import statement imports the baho.mqtt.client code. This is going to allow us to write client code to access mqtt in Python. Python doesn't normally know about mqtt so we're adding this library. In the previous video we created test code that showed how to use the motor kit library. The new stuff down here is the client name server address and this thing that sets up our mqtt client based on the client name that we've got. So this is just something that you'll do for any MQTT client. Now down here, the left and right speed are going to act as our motor throttle values. And remember, one means full speed forward, negative one means full speed backwards. Typically to get any movement, you've got to have an absolute value of 0.5 or greater. 
these trim values that I have up here, these you can adjust if you have motor speeds that aren't perfectly aligned, and that's usually the case. So here I've got a situation where my bot veers a little bit to the right, so I've subtracted a little bit, that's what left trim means, from the left speed, and this makes my bot go more in a straight line. If you're having problems with your bot veering one way or another, feel free to play with these values. Now this chunk of code, def connection status, is a function which is going to communicate with a broker and it's going to subscribe to the topic PyBot slash move. You can name topics anything you want and all messages from our app are going to have the topic PyBot slash move and the two print statements print out messages to the terminal window but you're actually not going to see those if your Python program is running as a background process. I think it's a good idea to have these in here though in case you want to modify this code at some point in the future on a similar project and you want to verify that you're properly subscribing to a particular topic. Now let's scroll up and look at this function below here, the one that says def message decoder. Now what this is doing in the first section is it's taking a look at the topic that we've subscribed to and it's pulling out the message. Now our messages might be forward, stop, backward, left, right, and we can see what we've got below there is just a bunch of if else if statements which take a look and say hey if it is a particular message like forward then throttle forward. I've got some print statements here again if you're running and you can actually see output in the console you're not running in the background those may be useful for debugging if you ever modify this code in the future. And then we've got four lines down here. We take the two functions we've written, connection status and message decoder. We associate those with our MQTT client, and then we do our connection to the server and we loop forever. So now let's just scroll to the top of the code so that we can find the name of this file. Let's just control dash pybot.py. I'm gonna copy that here, just saves us some typing and hopefully eliminate some typos. Then we're gonna to return to the terminal. I'll type nano space, then paste in the file name and press enter. And we've got a blank nano file that's gonna have the name that we just added. Now return to the code in the browser. Let's go down to the bottom and click and drag all the way up so that we highlight all the code. Command C to copy it. And let's return to the terminal. We could just Command V to paste this into nano. I like to press the up arrows to go up to the top just to make sure that all my code is in there. It is. Then Control X, press Enter to save the file. And we've got our control dash pybot.py Python program on our Raspberry Pi. So now let's run this program. This is gonna be a subscriber. We're gonna type in Python3 space control dash pybot.py, press enter, and we see immediately here that we've got subscribing and subscribe show up. So we can see if we scroll down here, these two print statements have come from the connection status function that we wrote, which is called down here. So our subscribers all set up, this Python program is running, and it's ready to receive messages that are published in the pybot slash move topic. So now we've got our MQTT server running, we've got our subscriber running, we need to publish some messages. So that's what these two commented lines do up here. So what I'd like you to do is to highlight this first mosquito pub line up here, the one that says forward. Now this single command is gonna act like a publisher. It's gonna publish to the topic pybot slash move the command forward, and that'll get our bot moving forward. Now once it starts moving forward, um, it's gonna continue to do that until it receives another command. So right below that, we've got the command that shows stop in there. You wanna have that ready. Um, um, and you'll probably want to hold your bot up too so that it doesn't continue to run and run and run and run into the wall. So let's copy this line with a command C and we can minimize our browser. We'll be back in the terminal. Now in this window, we're running our subscriber program and we don't want to interrupt that, but we also need to get back to the prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the shell menu here. I'm going to select new window and that's going to be a new window with profile basic. That's totally fine. And this opens up a new terminal window. So I'm going to initiate another SSH session into my PyBot here so that I can see the command prompt. And then at the command prompt, once I've logged in, I'm gonna paste in the command that I just copied, and this command is gonna publish a message to our Mosquito Broker on our PyBot server. That message will have the topic PyBot slash move, and the message inside of that topic is gonna to be forward. When you press enter, the broker is gonna pick up that message and it's gonna forward it on to the subscriber, which is our Python program over in this other window here, and that's gonna throttle forward the engines on our bot. Now I just use my robot chassis box up on its side to act as blocks to lift my PyBot up so it won't hit a wall. And now I'm gonna press enter. Now my bot continues to run, I press up arrow, that re-enters the last command that I've entered in there. I'm going to backspace over forward, change that to stop, 
press enter, my bot stops and broker and subscriber are working great. So I'm gonna close this terminal window and you'll get a terminate message, it's okay to do that. And let's take a look at this terminal window. We see actually after we have the subscribing and the subscribe statements, if you look back in your Python code, we wrote some code for some print statements after each movement is happening. So that's why we've got our moving forward. It shows the throttle speeds for the left and the right wheel. And then right after that, we see the stopping message. And so now there's one more thing that we want to do. Right now, in order for our control PyBot code to run, we've got to log into our Py on our terminal and then run the code. But what we can do is we can actually set this up so that the program runs automatically as soon as our MQTT broker, that's the Mosquito program, runs. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I've actually written some code for it. So why don't we interrupt the execution of control-pybot now. We can do that by typing in Control-C. You'll see some messages that show up here. And then let's head back over to our browser. We're still in our control control-pybot.py. I'm going to press the back arrow in our browser to return to all the files that are in our repo. And the file that I want you to grab is this one that says pybot-mqttclient-service. Now what we have here is a service file that takes advantage of something in the operating system called systemd. This is just going to set up so that our control-pybot.py program runs after the mosquito service starts up. So copy this pseudo nano line here. Let's return to the terminal and let's paste this in, press enter. This starts up nano and it's gonna create a file on our Pi and it's gonna place it in the appropriate directory with the name that we wanna use. Now let's return to our browser, copy the contents of this file with command C, minimize the browser, return to the terminal program, command V to paste this in, command X, Press enter to save this, and the file is created. Now let's open our browser up one last time. Uh, I've got the command in order to be able to execute this. It's a command we've actually seen before. That's the uh, sudo system control ctl right here. That'll set up our service so that it runs automatically. So highlight that line from sudo through service, command c to copy, minimize our browser, return to the terminal, command V, press enter. And now whenever you turn on your Pi and your motor hat, all the software is gonna run that we need to be executing in order to control our robot from our app. In order to test this out, I'm gonna type in sudo halt and press enter, and we'll notice that PyBot is no longer running. So what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna quit out of the terminal program. I'm gonna turn off both battery packs on my Pi. So all the power is off to the Pi. Then I'm gonna turn them back on and I'm gonna wait 30 seconds for everything to boot up. Now, everything that we need for the client to control the PyBot is gonna run automatically. So I run terminal again, I log into PyBot. I should type my password correctly this time. And the first thing that we can do just to prove that we are running that Python script that we wrote is if you open your browser, uh, I actually have a command that we'd used before. That's this sudo system control command. Now this time, instead of checking the Mosquito server, we're gonna check to see if the service code that we just wrote is up and running. So highlight from sudo over to service, do a command C to copy this, minimize the browser, paste this into the command line and press enter. And in fact, it says it's active. So yep, the code that we just wrote is running. So now what we're gonna do is I get back into my browser. Uh, I'm gonna go um, back into the control dash pybot code. And remember, this is just where we've got those mosquito underscore pub commands. So highlight mosquito underscore pub through forward, do a command C to copy, minimize your browser. I'm gonna paste that command in, press enter. Our bot starts running. Then I press the up arrow, change it to stop again, press enter, our bot stops. We've got a broker running, we've got a subscriber running. Up next, let's write that app, which is gonna act as the publisher and control our bot. Keep at it.